Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today is the official unboxing embargo for the GeForce RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti. But in addition to just taking it out of the box and showing you the card, we can share some more technical information. Nvidia provided us with loads and loads of info, uh, way more than we had time to digest as we only got access to it last night and I have been busy testing that new Athlon 200GE processor. Despite that, I will be touching on some of what we believe to be the more interesting aspects of the technical document, but ultimately I think you guys are probably uh, a bit overhearing about how well the RTX series will perform based on information provided by NVIDIA. So most of the details we'll just save for our review on the 19th, at which point we'll finally have performance numbers that will actually mean something. Since we're allowed to unbox and show you the card, I thought we'd go one step further and tear down the 2080 to have a closer look at the PCB and of course the new cooler. We do have a dual fan cooler that we've sort of seen, but we haven't really got a truly good look at yet, I don't think. So we're going to do that and we'll also compare it to the cooler on the 1080. And as luck would have it, I do have a tear down uh, or 1080 cooler basically. So we can check that out and nice and convenient. Unfortunately, you probably noticed I have just the single box. I don't have my 2080 Ti yet. It is on the way, uh, but some issues there with DHL and custom. So that has delayed the card. Hopefully I will get it tomorrow, if not on Monday and then I can get all the testing done ready for our day one coverage. NVIDIA were a little bit slow getting the cards out. Um, it's usually pretty tight, these deadlines. This one seems a little more crazy than normal, but yeah, hopefully it goes smooth from this point forward. We just got the drivers, so drivers were also quite uh, late. Basically, all media around the world can kiss their weekend goodbye, uh, along with that thing you normies call sleep. So first, before we rip the card out of the box and have a look at it and drool over it basically, let's just go over a few technical details. Basically, the main architectural change between Pascal and Turing is the addition of two extra blocks in each Turing SM unit. Whereas Pascal was essentially just a massive collection of floating point units, Turing introduces tensor cores and integer units in addition to the standard floating point units. This makes the core larger and increases the TDP, but crucially, Turing supports concurrent FP32 and INT32 execution, for what NVIDIA claims is a handy performance boost. The idea is that the integer instructions that previously ran on the floating point units can now be offloaded to the integer pipeline in Turing and run concurrently with floating point instructions. NVIDIA claims that on average 36 integer instructions can be offloaded and run on the integer cores per 100 floating point instructions. Though of course that varies depending on the game. It's claimed by NVIDIA that this concurrent execution helps improve shader performance by 50% or more in some situations. Of course, these graphs don't show how concurrent execution will impact a game's final frames per second figure. Shading is only one part of what the GPU needs to do to render a game, so you'll still have to wait for benchmarks to see how this architecture change impacts gaming performance. But what we know is that at least one aspect of a game rendering can be accelerated in a new way with Turing. Turing also has a native HDR display pipeline thanks to an all new display engine. So the performance drop Tim discovered with Pascal cards when switching on HDR should be fixed with Turing. Nvidia was very keen for us to explore this but with extremely limited time to test the cards uh, that will likely have to be a follow up piece uh, probably produced by Tim. And the final thing worth mentioning right now is NVIDIA has a new NV scanner API that allows one click overclocking. Utilities such as EVGA Precision will integrate this API and provide a feature where with one click you can sit back for roughly 20 minutes as the software uncovers the exact voltage frequency curve for your graphics card. And from there you can choose optimal stable frequencies to run. Sounds pretty neat and we'll have to give that one a try a bit later on with our review. Tim also plans to dive into overclocking and provide some separate content pieces around that as well, so that should be quite interesting. So that is pretty much everything we need to discuss at this point. I think it's time to take the RTX 2080 out of the box. I'll take a look at the card first. We'll go over all the external design of the card. Uh, then I'll do a quick jump cut. You guys will be none the wiser, but I'll jump away, quickly test thermals, and then I'll jump back to tear the thing apart and we'll continue from there. Okay, so I'll get my knife and I'm a bit excited about this. I don't think I've ever anticipated a new graphics cards or new GPU release uh, as much as this, anticipated the performance. Uh, be interesting to see how these perform. Obviously we won't know till uh, next week, but yeah, very exciting stuff. So here is the box. 
pretty standard box, similar to the other ones. I mean, the box art's a bit different, but the physical design and size of the box is what we've seen with previous models. So, here we go. It'll probably be in a uh, anti-static bag. Yes, it is, so it doesn't look quite as good. Hmm. Got some a, a little tag attached to it. I'm pretty sure that doesn't come with the uh, retail versions. We'll just cut that off. Without scratching the card. Okay. Let's take this anti-static bag off. And we got some clear plastic protecting it. We'll get that off. And let's try that again for maximum effect. Are you ready? I'll put this away actually. I don't want to lose any fingers. I need them for benchmarking. And here we go again. It's like you've never seen me do this before. Whoa. Awesome. I have to say, it actually looks a lot better in the flesh than it did uh, in the release, the announcement uh, coverage and photos and stuff we saw. I, th I said in my announcement video that I didn't really like the look of this card. I A lot of people didn't like the look of this card, but I quite looked uh, quite looked. I quite liked the look of the original Founders Edition card. I thought it was quite cool. I liked the aggressive lines, all the triangles and things. Well, that was pretty cool, but yeah, obviously not everyone's cup of tea. But anyway, uh, and I didn't really like the look of this, but I have to say, seeing it in the flesh, I think it looks, actually looks really good. It feels very premium. The, uh, the silver backplate, which is a one-piece backplate this time, looks really nice. A lot better than what I was expecting, to be honest. It looked very plasticky and nasty in the photos, I thought, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty much all aluminium, and you'd see it in most systems like that, and I think that looks, that looks pretty awesome. So obviously, it looks very different to the original 1080 Founders Edition graphics card, uh, for obvious reasons. The cooler is very different. You had the single blower fan on this design, which they've used for as long as I can remember pretty much until back in the days when they were single slot cards and going back a long way. But anyway, we get the two fans and we get what looks like a massive heat sink. We're going to get into that in a second. Uh, nice little IO panel there. We've got the type C, you've got uh, display ports. I'll provide some information about the display ports towards the end of the video. Uh, HDMI out, so yeah, three display port out. And then of course the silver back plate that we just looked at, which wraps all the way around the card, completely encloses the card. So that's different. And then we have this little plastic bit here that pops out to give you access to the NV Link connectors if you want to connect another card up. But yeah, SLI, I don't know. If you guys still do that, I don't. But yeah, I think it's probably time to go do what I've got to do with this, jump back, and then we'll pull it apart. Okay, so in total the PCB measures 26.4 centimeters long and 9.5 centimeters tall and weighs 238 grams. The cooler though, that tips the scales at a whopping 936 grams, which is seriously heavy for what is a rather compact cooler by high-end graphics card standards.
With the cooler installed, the RTX 2080 Founders Edition measures 27 centimeters long and 10 centimeters tall, and in total weighs 1,266 grams, making it 25% heavier than the 1080 FE card. Speaking of which, the cooler on the 1080 FE weighs just 686 grams, and that means the 2080 cooler is 36% heavier. The fins on the heatsink measure 12 millimeters tall and run virtually the entire length of the card, so this is largely why the card is so heavy, uh, that and the fact that almost the entire thing has been constructed from aluminium. On the PCB, we of course have the massive Turing GPU, codenamed TU-104. There's also eight 1GB GDDR6 memory chips providing an 8GB VRAM buffer. The chips in question are Micron's MT61K256M32JE14A, and this is their 14 gigabits per second memory. We also find what looks to be an 8 plus 2 phase VRAM using on semiconductor power stages. I wasn't quite able to make out the part numbers with the time I had available, so I'll have to dig into that for the review. Finally, I should just note that the RTX 2080 FE cards feature a 6-pin and 8-pin power connector, whereas the FE version of the GTX 1080 only included a single 8-pin. I have to say, overall, I am much, much happier with how these new Founders Edition graphics cards look. As I said earlier, didn't really like the uh, images, the stuff provided by NVIDIA that we saw online, but yeah, now having got my little grubby mitts on it, I very much approve. It's, uh, it looks and feels very premium, so yeah, very, very nice card. Of course, you guys are probably sick of hearing about these cards without seeing any actual benchmarks, and I'm a bit sick of talking about them with any <laughs> without any actual benchmarks at this point, so... Thankfully, we don't have to wait too much longer now, so stay tuned. Next week, we will have our day one coverage. There'll be loads of reviews online, so you can check ours out. I encourage you to check out other reviews and see what we all find and what we all think. Uh, our day one coverage will include about a dozen games, so possibly not as many as you guys are hoping for, but it's just due to time. Obviously, we only have a few days to get this stuff done, so I've benchmarked all the other cards. I've been doing that madly for weeks now. All that data's in, just got to add this to it. But yeah, we'll probably do 12 games for the day one coverage because we also want to look at things like overclocking, thermals, power consumption, and whatever else. But on day two, the following day, we will have a 30 plus game comparison. So that will be probably worth waiting around for. It should be pretty good. Speaking of which, I need to go get benchmarking. So I'm going to take this guy up to the benchmark lab now and go get testing. As always, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I'll catch you again soon. I'm your host, Steve. Bye.